What's going on everybody? This is Kev the Barber with another classic and you are sitting at the barber's table. Thanks for showing up. Today we'll be doing a high fade. It will not be bald. You can see your hairline lightly around the, the perimeter as you saw in the beginning. I'm just lightly wetting the hair right now. <laughs> lightly. Pretty much wetting the hair trying to make sure it doesn't like go on his face though so that we can manipulate the hair. Here I'm just um, finding what I want the length in the front to be. Um, I'm looking in the mirror and I'm cutting and I'm cutting down and just seeing what I want my guy to start with and I'm going to go down the middle and um, finish it that way. Today's tutorial, if you haven't noticed, is a bit longer than most. I like keeping my tutorials around like, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Um, I don't know, something within me makes me feel like nobody wants to watch more than 10 minutes of the barber's table or something like 10, 9. It's a nice little... Uh, I don't know, nice little time period for me personally, but if you are fine with this time period so I can like, I don't have to speed up the combing and the scissoring and stuff like that so you guys get to see the detail of what I'm doing. So I just went down the middle and now I'm coming up, back up the middle and using the middle as the guide, if you understand what I mean. So you can see how on the edges, the hairs are longer. I'm just bringing it out to even out the top. This is like a nice little trick I use all the time just to make sure that the top is even. And one thing you should notice is that the, the hair on the top is combed to the side. And you see how I just combed it to the side there? And then I comb it back. If you're not combing perpendicularly to pick up the hair, it's gonna be different. Like if I combed all the hair back and tried to pick it up, it'd be a little difficult. So a little tip there is make sure that you're picking up the hair perpendicularly to the way that it's laying down because that way you're able to um, be able to move more efficiently so you'll see me combing the hair to the side just flicking off the hair just like that and then able to pick it up that way so now if you saw just there there's gonna be some hair in the front that's combed to the side so I'm just over directing it back so that the hair is I don't cut off too much now what over direction is is pulling the hair away from where it grows pulling it away from where it, uh, not pulling it straight out, pulling it straight out and back. That way you get to re retain some length. And that's what I did with the front. And here I'm just lightly blow drying it to make sure that I'm preparing the hair for the clipper. I'm styling it really right now so that I can have like a a nice set for my, uh, my fading. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you like and comment. It really helps the videos. It makes me know what you guys like to see, what you want to see more of. Um, and let, let me know in the comment section below if you guys are missing the vlogs. I definitely will be bringing them back. Here I'm using a two and I'm just riding up the sides. Just uh, creating my shape really. I left the bottom because the magic clips, at least my magic clips, they don't do too well with such thickness with guards. So here I'm just refining that shape. So what happens with guards is if you look at a, a regular clipper, it has a cutting blade and a comb blade. When you add a guard, you're adding yet another comb blade, which makes it a little less, um, a little less effective. You know, here I'm bringing out clipper over comb because it's more is more tension you get more tension so you, you cut cleaner so that's what i do at the bottom because it really helps see it's like it looks terrible right now it's just getting the bulk down and then from there i'm gonna fade down what fading down does is it allows me to control the 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 lightness you see how it's like getting light right there and if i want it to be any lighter I'm every the whole time i'm staring at the lightness to see okay do i want that to be the lightest part of the haircut or would i like to go any lower so here I'm using the one and I'm going right up to the bottom of the two um, just to make sure that I'm, I'm blending in, I'm flicking out. And in that way, my fade is always faded. There's no lines being created here. And it's one of my favorite ways to fade because it's, it's safe if you know what you're doing, if you know how to aim. So here now I, I take the one close all the way to the bottom. The whole time I'm looking at it, I'm watching and I'm saying, hey, do I want this to be the lightest part of my fade? And if you look at the front of his hairline right there, it looks a little crazy, a little blotchy. I know I have to come back around there and fix that. 
I left that there just because I wanted to customize it with scissor over comb. Here I'm using a, I think this is my half. Yeah, this is my half guard or 1 16th guard for people who, who call it that. And um, what I'm doing here is I'm lightening it. You know, I'm, I'm bringing it up. I'm, I'm actually coming up to see if I can create a line sort of. Um, this is this is closed and I'm bringing it up to see how far I can go and I don't know if you can see it but there's like a slight uh, line right there at the back of his head and I'm like okay there we go I can I can release my lever there I can pull it back there I'm just aiming and seeing what I can do this is this is what fading is in real time this is the first time this guy's been in my chair first time I've seen him he's back to school haircut he probably won't be back for another six months that's how it happened in the barbershop and so I like it. I like I like what that did. So now with that bulk that I was talking about to before, I'm just clipping that. You know, just just reading it to see if I like it. You know, like as I said before, it's the first time I've cut his hair. So the whole time it's just reading. You know, I I have my own setup, my own um, idea of what the haircut should look like, but I'm making sure that I don't bump into anything. Like if there's a calic or the hair is too light in a certain area. It's pretty thick here, so it's a it's a pretty safe bet with hair like this. But even still, I'm I'm taking my time and um doing a finger over sheer over finger, and I'm um just refining. If I see any hair sticking out, they're laying weird. You know, just making sure that it blends nice into the hair for the grow back. Um, sometimes sometimes you can do haircuts that look good right now, but just because it's looking good doesn't mean you'll grow back good you got to make sure that the hairs literally do go from shortest to longest in a nice blend now here with the shear over comb um, you got to make sure that your top hand is staying still. I, I try and make my make that uh, a point for myself Because um, in that way your hand is acting like a clipper if you look at the clipper Your your cutting blade is moving and your top blade is not you want to mimic that with shear over comb because it It makes that it makes the cut precise imagine if you're using a clipper and both blades were moving like one was moving side to side and another one was moving up and down it's like there would be zero accuracy Same thing with shear. You gotta make sure that your your bottom blade or, or your, your cutting blade is moving and your comb blade is not moving. Because if it is moving, you won't be cutting the same thing every time. So you see how that hair is moving to the side? It's kind of like flowing. I was trying to maintain that. So that's what I'm I'm reading this whole time. And I know a lot of people are gonna cringe because they did on Instagram. <laughs> cringe at uh, they're not being a shape up, you know? And um, my take on that is everything doesn't need a shape up. There was a point in time where I believed everything needed a shape up. Every haircut needed to be crisp and, and lined up, but that's not everybody's lifestyle. That's not a look that everybody goes for. And one bad thing about shape ups, you see how the hair is hanging down? Gotta clip that. But one bad thing about shaping up everything is the grow back is not, is not pleasant. You know, for this guy, when he gets his, when he gets his hair shaped, gets his shape up around the perimeter and not on the front, he, he feels he can have his hair longer for like another month, you know, um, now that's not everybody's life either, but you understand what I'm saying. It's like, you got to make sure that you're cutting hair to, to fit somebody's lifestyle. If you just, if you're cutting just for that day, people are going to be unpleasant because they're going to find a barber or they're striving for haircuts to last a long time, you know, and you got to know what industry you're in. You're in the industry of men. Men don't want to get a haircut that they have to maintain, get a haircut that they keep coming back to the shop for. You want a haircut that looks good without them doing as much work. And these are the type of things you wanna look into when you're doing barbering, this type of problems you need to solve. Everybody has clippers and all clippers solve the problem of cutting hair. You need to think, you know, past that. That's for my barbers on here. Here I'm just, you know, shaping up with my bevel blades and I know, I know, I said I was gonna do a review on these, 
um, before I do it, I mean, for those who watch my tutorials, you'll learn now that I love these. It's the only ones that I use at the moment. I mean, I've dropped them once. They're not working as I'd, I'd like them to work or as they were working initially, once or twice rather. And it was, they are pretty bad drops, so they're still working. Now, if this if this video is going a little too slow for you, I do suggest that you can go to the, the settings. You can go to settings and putting on 1.5 times speed, and that way you can see it in a faster pace. But I wanted to make this video a little slower for those who really wanted to see the process, you know. And again, in the comment section below, I'd really like to hear if you guys like this this time, all the stuff I've showed, because um, I'm a... Honestly, I'm a bit self-conscious about allowing my videos to go certain length because I want you guys to see all of it. I don't want to just be talking the whole time or, you know, it's just, I, I'm not quite sure what you guys are looking for, uh, just to put it succinctly. feel like the fade came out nice um personally i would like this haircut bald but you know i think based on the lifestyle this kid has he's, this dude is 14 and he's like 6'3 by the way it's a little uh it's a little crazy a little crazy no i didn't ask him if he plays basketball because you can really tell he doesn't you know you you can really tell when somebody plays ball you can really look at them like see the way they move it's like a ball move, you know what I'm saying? It's like you walk and it's like, yeah, he plays ball. Yeah, he one of them. <laughs> He's one of us. And here I'm just curving the neck. Um, I could have gone lower, but I feel like the roundness would have been too tiny. It would have looked a little weird. So I just went up to, it was a feeling process really. Just went up to the area that would have been nice and look look the most natural but sharp. And make sure you guys clean around the neck, around the neck and under the ears, all of that, especially here. You can see that it's hairy for him, but you see I'm right there under the ear. You can see that it's hairy for him, so it's easy to, to just you know go there and clean it up. But even for those who it's not apparent, you can really get off some fuzz and it makes your haircut look a lot sharper. I just clipped away from that because, you know. Now, using my uh, 245 shave razor uh, to just clean up and tighten up this this lineup. People have been asking me about this because I saw this video on Instagram not too long ago. And it's my favorite razor right now. My favorite razor. I, I applaud 245, applaud um, the whole squad, get beamed for what they're doing for the industry right now innovating taking steps to uh make this this a better industry and that's what i strive to do and so i respect it when i see a lot of other people doing the same thing um and this is my ocd kicking in i just use a razor now i'm using a electric shaver <laughs> like i don't know sometimes i do this just just to if, 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 if the point wasn't made yet it's definitely made now like that's <laughs> that's just how i do things sometimes and it's like, 
yeah, I, I could get really annoying. Here I'm just looking at how the, the hair moves, you know, just trying to see what's up. Now I'm putting on the product, I put on the layer on the top, and then now I'm layering it on the inside. If you put it on the top, then, you know, all the hairs don't get coated. So I, I put it on the top and pull it back so that the, all the perimeter of each hair follicle gets coated. And it, it kind of allows for some fake texture on the top. All the hairs are on the same length on the top, but it looks like they aren't when you do it that way. Thanks for watching this whole entire video yet again. Thanks for uh, and again, let me know if you like this type of video, like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys in the next one.